Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So from this session onwards, I shall be discussing topics on memory management. And here, this particular session is all about the introduction to memory management. But introduction is also very important here to make you understand the topics that I will be teaching in future sessions for this particular module that is the memory management. This memory is very very much essential in the system. Without memory, the task cannot be performed because Definitely you require some space to store the program, to store the process, only then the task can be done. When you don't have space, then there is no question of what getting the task done, getting the job done. So that is the reason this memory is very very important component in the system and every one of us know that we are getting a very huge size of memory nowadays. Okay, Even in your laptop now, basic uh, the very minimum, uh, say, minimum uh, size for the secondary memory or the hard disk which we are getting is 1 TB nowadays every one of us. So this 1 TB of memory which we call it as secondary memory okay. One TB is a very huge size. Normally what will happen the CPU is there the CPU wants to what wants to execute the instruction. So this particular uh, secondary memory which is very huge whenever the CPU wants to execute a program to fetch an instruction from the secondary memory will take a very very long time. The reason is what definitely if you are having a very bigger size then the time spent in searching the instruction will also be more. So what is that normally any client or any one of us what any user wishes to have what a memory a very large space they want that is the large size this is what every one of us want but at the same time what is the other desirable feature we want for the memory is the access time should be less access time should be access time should be less so to access any particular location, many particular instruction from the secondary memory, the CPU has to what uh, access it in a very very less amount of time. So that is what we call it as access time. Access time less but large size of the memory. These two things are quite contradictory if you see because the more is the size, the more is the time spent to search a location. Lesser is the size, then lesser is the time spent to spend to search a particular instruction. That is the reason in between the CPU and the secondary memory, you have another type of memory called as the main memory. So for the main memory, we normally call it as RAM. So if you see in your systems also what is that you are seeing the RAM size nowadays what we are getting for our laptops and all you can see it is like 6 GB, 8 GB and here you are getting secondary memory 1 TB. So 6 GB and 8 GB or whatever it is this size is quite small fine. So the CPU can access in a very less amount of time any instruction from the main memory or from the RAM or from the physical memory but the instructions are as soon as a user types the program, the program gets stored in the secondary memory. During the time of execution, the programs are loaded into the main memory. So that means what the CPU can access now directly from the main memory, not from the secondary memory. CPU is having what direct access to the main memory. Whereas the main memory and the secondary memory have got okay, this kind of access like Contents from the main memory can be moved to the secondary memory, contents from the secondary memory can be moved to the main memory. These things I will be telling you in detail. At present you just try to know that CPU is having what direct access to the main memory not to the secondary memory. But still you have uh, other levels also in between the CPU and the main memory which is quite faster and that you call it as the cache. Okay. So this these are the different levels wherein you, you can see for the memories in a case of a in particular system. The smaller is the size of the memory, faster is the access. Now at present in your syllabus, the memory management, you are going to have what the complete information about what the main memory and the processes that are moved to the main memory. That is the reason what we can do is since now cache we will not include. Moreover, this particular uh, cache is more mainly happening in what which subject computer architecture that is the reason we will now ignore this and we will try to look into these two memories only fine. So finally what is the conclusion we want a larger space and we want a faster access. 
So both these things can be achieved what with two different types of memories: the secondary memory and the main memory. Secondary memory is having a very large space. It can store any number of processes here. So that is what we want. Now we want more and more data to get stored in our system. So in that way, secondary memory is helping us. But when we want to have a very faster access, the main memory or the physical memory will help because the CPU will access directly to the main memory. This particular functioning can be related to what in our real life with this kind of situation you have a showroom, okay? The customer wants to buy some uh, fabric from this showroom, and the showroom is having all costlier items, and there are so so many fabrics which are limited in quantity. So whatever quantity the customer wants, the customer can pay that money and get that particular fabric. Suppose if the customer demands that it, it uh, he or she wants a more quantity of that fab fabric, then the showroom person will direct that per uh, customer to a kind of shop, or you can say a kind of uh, wholesale type of shop, okay, or go down type, wherein you have huge quantity of that fabric present. So whenever you want to buy something in more quantity, they are giving you in less price. So what is that we call normally? We call it as retail price and the wholesale price. So retail price you have to pay here, whereas whole, whole, uh, wholesale price you are going to pay when you are taking from this. But but what under one condition? If you are buying a huge quantity of that fab fabric, then only you will be getting. It's not just fabric. Any item you take, buy in huge quantity, get more discount. Similar is the case here. More is the size of this memory, okay? Less ex compared to main memory, it will be less expensive. But as and when the contents of the the size of the memory becomes smaller, the price also increases. That is, the cost increases. The reason is what? It is quite easily accessible by the CPU. The more easier is accessible, the more easier is for the CPU to access a particular location, then the cost per unit will be more here okay the cost per unit will be more so per unit cost for the memory is what the user wants to see size of the memory and access to the memory so remember these are the desirable features from any uh, user access to the memory now let us see suppose for example as i said this is having a faster access faster access is what the let us take 50 millisecond the access to uh, the time for this particular cpu to access the main memory is 50 millisecond whereas to access a secondary memory it is 200 millisecond let us take okay some numbers here See what happens exactly is whenever CPU wants to access a particular instruction, that instruction should be present in the main memory. And that instruction is what? It is a, it, it can be one of the instruction of a particular process. So I can tell you that, okay, suppose in the secondary memory, you have the processes placed in this manner, just for simplicity, I'm taking four processes that are there. Now out of these four processes, when the CPU is executing process P2 and P3, P2 and P3 will be loaded into the main memory. Normally the starting part of the main memory is always meant for the operating system, then the other two processes P2 and P3 can be loaded into the memory. So whichever processes uh, the CPU is executing, only those processes will be loaded into the main memory. Now look here, the access time to uh, access time for the main memory is 50 millisecond and this is 200 millisecond. When I say process P2, it is what it is what the different instructions I1, I2, I3 like this, there can be so many instructions for P3 also. So, so many instructions will be there for each of the processes. Whenever CPU ex uh, tries to access an instruction of a process, most of the time it finds in the main memory. But fewer times, what happens now, that instruction or that process, now instead of telling instruction, I can tell you the process is not present in the main memory. Then where it is present, it is present in the secondary memory. So, we can say that, suppose assume that 90% of the time CPU finds that instructions in the main memory. 10% of the time, it does not find instructions in the main memory. Then 10% of the time, if it is not finding where it is present, it is present in the secondary memory. If 90% of the time, if it finds uh, the instructions in the main memory, we say it is a, what? The hit ratio. The hit ratio is 0 0.9, 90%. 
whereas the miss ratio is 0.1 that is 10 percent okay access time for the main memory is 50 millisecond access time for the secondary memory is 200 milliseconds now to calculate the effective access time effective access time will be what effective access time will be 0 0.9 90 percent of the time it is finding in the main memory and the main memory uh, access time is 50 millisecond plus what happens plus 10 percent of the time that is 0 0.1 it is not finding in the main memory. So, if it is not finding in the main memory, it means what? It, ha it has searched, that means that access has happened and that is why you have to write down what the access time for the main memory also plus what? Plus the access time of the secondary memory. Okay, This is how you can calculate the effective access time. Just write here 9.9 into 50, 45. Okay, plus 250 into 0.125 okay 70 millisecond is the ac effective access time for this particular example the cpu is having direct access only to the main memory those instructions which are not there in the main memory will be loaded into the main memory and then the cpu tries to fetch those instructions so this is just an introduction to the main memory basically now what is uh, complete uh, what what is that you need to learn in this complete module is see uh, mainly cpu wants to take instructions from the main memory instructions are present in the secondary memory so these instructions from the secondary memory or these processes from the secondary memory they will be moved to the main memory so what method you are using in order to make these processes okay make these processes move to the main memory how are you placing the pro processes in the main memory this is just about the introduction to memory management i request my audience to like share and subscribe to my channel hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care